We've been uh, theoretically, theoretical, theoretically practical for about a year now, year and a half, I guess. And the name's not doing us for doing it for us anymore, mostly because no one can spell it, and also theoretically was funny. Uh, theoretically, uh, it's funny, anyways. So our new name is wires, tires, and fires. Oh god, it's falling up quick. Yeah. Oh. Oh god. It's fine. It's fine. Enjoy the show! Hello and welcome to Theoretically Practical. This is Brent. If you haven't seen me before, hello. You know, whatever. Subscribe if you haven't seen me before, maybe? I don't know, whatever. Anyways, this week, we're gonna be doing a comparison between Big Iron and the new hotness. Um, so it's gonna be separated up into two, two videos. The first one is gonna be on MIG welding. So let's look at Team MIG welder. Team MIG welder is this uh, uh, ESOB, there we go, ESOB Rebel, 205 ACDC, it's a 205 IC. This is my friend's machine he lent to me for this video because he's interested in this as well. The other contender is the Miller CP300, which was originally a three phase machine, but I converted to single phase machine. Uh, and then finally is the Hobart Handler 140 because it was under my bench and it's the third MIG welder that I have. All right, so that's gonna set the stage for this week. We're gonna just do, uh, the MIG welding's gonna be pretty simplistic because all I got is steel and I don't have any aluminum whatevers and uh, spool gun, there we go, that's the word. I don't have any of those, so we're gonna just be doing a, a pretty brief test on this on some, we're gonna go on some thin material, so like we're gonna butt some 16 gauge or smaller, uh, whatever I've got together, and we'll go with some quarter inch thick as well and see, uh, you know, can the big Miller do the small stuff? Can the EMP 200 hang on the big stuff? Now, I'm not gonna be setting any of these outside of the range of the machines, really. So what I'll probably do is you'll see uh, a test of this on the small and the medium material, uh, a test of this on the small and medium material, and then we'll also do a large material with the, the Miller. But realistically, if you're at home in your shop uh, welding on little stuff like I do, you know, you're not really welding material that's more than a quarter of an inch thick almost ever. So do you need the big killer? The other thing is, is that I have always been told that big transformer welders are smoother and a little bit better to run than the new fancy IGBT machines. We're gonna see that too. So we'll talk about it and um, yeah, we'll get going. One thing to note as far as control goes on the test, all the machines will be running the same spool. I'm gonna move this spool around, it fits in all the machines, of uh, Lincoln Electric Super Arc L56. This is just ER70S6, but they made a different brand name because that's what Lincoln Electric wanted to do. They're also all gonna be running off the same bottle, which is actually brand new, not on purpose, just happened to be that way, of uh, Argon CO2 mix. So uh, that's gonna be apples to apples for all three of these MIG welders. So that should make a difference. Uh, it's 035 size wire, which is not really small enough to do very small stuff, but that's what I typically run in my big machine and I needed a roll. So that's, that's what we're getting. Actually, this is flux core on there right now, but that's a different problem entirely. So yeah, we're gonna get this, uh, this ESOB set up and welding in just a few minutes here though. We're gonna compare the, the feed roller mechanisms because this is something that makes a huge difference on all these machines. And you'll notice on this one, you've got your roller right there with the groove in it, and you just have a ball bearing on the top. So you only have one roller driving it, and it's a small diameter. Now let's go over, this is a $4,000 welder, by the way, so it's a nice machine. Um, and I'm sure this is fine, but I've had problems with feed rollers on small machines before, and the design was similar. This machine is always giving me fits and shits with its uh, feed roller. And if we flip it up, we see 
it's just got a bearing just like the other one and a little feed roller still small diameter i mean they could almost be the same thing that one's clearly made better but it's the same feature now let's go on to the big industrial monster which Realistically, I'm calling this a $500 machine for the for the setup, but you couldn't buy one of these new for anything like that. So bear that in mind. And you've got two rollers and they're gear driven to each other. So you've got, and they're larger diameter. So you just have a ton of feed force on this. Now I have messed with small MIGs like that one and that one and had no end of issues with the feed. This thing, Never, never a problem. It just puts it out there. So just something to consider. Again, this isn't really, again, this isn't meant to be like, oh, this one's good, this one's bad, this one's middle. It's just, well, you know, if you're a guy with your own shop, if you have enough space for the big old machines, is that a good option? Is it a good option? You know, um, certainly if you're not a DIYer at all, well, you probably don't need a welder, but if you're not an electrical guy, buying the one machine that just works and does everything is probably fine. But I, I like these big old machines. So, the end of feed roller rant. Another quick aside about feed rolls. You notice I got a silver 035 roller and a black 035 roller that both came with this machine. And if you can see, I don't know if the focus is good enough, but the silver one has little ridges on it and the black one is just a groove. The one with ridges on it is for flux core wire. So if you run a flux cord wire, you run the ridged one, otherwise you run the other one. The groove will tend to deform the flux core wire because you have to put more pressure on it, but the grooved one will tend to rip chunks out of the non-flux core wire and can bind up your machine. So that's why you you got both of these rollers and what they do and why you'd choose one over the other. One more thing I want to mention that's very nice that I would not have expected is when you open up this side cover, when the machine is actually on and plugged in, you got a little light down there. I mean, I'm tickled pink about that. And this machine has a nice feature where if you're trying to feed in the wire, and it senses that you haven't actually started welding yet, it speeds the reel up because it knows you're trying to feed the wire through and you're not welding. So I think that's a, a really nice feature. Again, it's, you know, it is what it is, but uh, these little features do add up when you're looking into buying, a, you know, an expensive machine and, and know that you're, you're getting something for that anyways, if only convenience. And now my wire is fed. All right, so... This is gonna be our rigorous testing methodology. We've got the small, which is, I think 18 or 20 gauge sheet metal. We've got some quarter inch, that'll be the medium. And then we'll have the full pull. So what I'm gonna do is try to set each of these machines up to weld the lightweight and the medium well. I'm gonna just tweak them till they run how I like, see how that goes. But then each machine, I'm going to turn it up 100% and see what it does to this because because why not? And 100% is so different on all these machines. So I'm going to start off with the ESOB and I'm going to start off with the uh, with the thin stuff and then we'll, uh, we'll work our way up from there. I'm going to try to get you guys a, a lens on to see some of this too. I'm going to start with Miller's suggested settings for this machine and the uh, other big Miller and the Hobart handler, even though that's kind of like a guesstimate. So um, we'll be using the settings, or actually on the Hobart, I'll look inside the lid. This is 20 gauge material, so 16 to 17 volts and 150 inches per minute is what Miller says. I've, uh, I've set this machine for those settings and uh, we'll give it a shot. I've got everything set up, I think. I've got the MIG welder set up. It's very unsettling to me that this particular machine does not have a fan run unless it needs to. I'm, I'm just used to that. I'm gonna run about like a one inch bead around here. Um, you guys have the auto darkening of, out of my old helmet, so hopefully that films well. Contact. guys well there's the little weld right there honestly it's a good looking weld it, it penetrated through the material it 
you know, it, it, I feel like I'd, I'd have more fill than that. It seems a little little light on the fill. But it welds smooth, it welds nice. I, I can't complain about that. Didn't even have to turn the fan on. This is the Esob Rebel medium thickness material, which is eighth inch thick test. That's at uh, 290 inches per minute and 18 and a half volts. Contact. I mean, we'll take the, uh, pull back the shield, but I don't know. It looks good to me on the front side. There's definitely uh, discoloration and penetration through to the back side. I would say those stock settings look pretty nice. I think, uh, I think that's pretty good. Okay. This is the ESOB welding machine, MIG welding, and this is the full pole. So instead of looking up the settings for quarter inch material, which I think this machine will do, I turn it up to 26 volts and 475 inches per minute, and we will just see what she do. Contact. I did not clean the backside of that material, so it is smoking. All right. Ugh. I'm gonna toss this outside for a minute. All right, well, there's your weld. Uh, it honestly went really well. It definitely uh, burnt all the way through and it's cooking off the crap on the backside, which is definitely good for me to breathe. Um, again, I, I just did a straight drag. I didn't do any fancy, like put knee in it to make it work better or anything like that. So looking at this, that uh, quarter inch material, or this is a little bit thicker than quarter maybe, that's probably your limit on a machine like that, which is which is fine. Uh, it's not a big deal. All right, guys, this is another entry into our MIG category. This is the uh, the cheap and cheerful, we'll call it, option. Uh, it does not have a fancy LED light in there. And we're welding 20 gauge or 24 gauge sheet metal. And if you look at the chart, it says we're supposed to use dash, dash, and dash settings. So great. We're gonna go with two and 30 though, cause 030 to 035, it shouldn't be that difference. Uh, the reason why we're not trying to set this up the way we set up the other machines is because this machine has, I'm assuming this is percent and not inches per minute and heat ranges of one, two, three, and four. Why they don't just tell you what the numbers align to, I don't know, but that's the case. So we'll fire this up. This was a $400 machine when I bought it. I don't know what they go for now. It was supposed to be the best of the little 120 volt wire feeders and it's it's fine for what it is. It's definitely a great place to start if you've never owned a machine before. I would just rather, I should have waited and found like a Miller 200 amp unit that was single phase already on Marketplace and paid about the same price for it. That would have been a much better buy, but I did want something portable. So in any case, this is the next offering and we're about to start with the 20 gauge. So we're somewhere around 16 to 17 volts or not, who knows? And um, 15, uh, 150 inches a minute, which may be 30, who knows? Yeah, so our, our very carefully controlled test has now completely gone out the window, but that's kind of, uh, I knew that would happen, so that's fine. And we'll about to see what this puppy can do. This is gonna be the Hobart Handler Welder on the thin, I think 20 gauge sheet metal. And you're gonna find out here real quick why they say they don't they don't recommend using 035 wire with this machine because this the, you can't do it. I burnt a bunch of holes over here trying, but this is the test, so this is what you get. Well, that was the first time I was able to not burn through with this. One thing, I, it's hard to see right where you're at now, but um, I don't know what it is about this either, but if you get down on this, you can see the ESOB weld is pretty flat. It went in well, it got good penetration. This one, it really sucked the material down 
quite significantly. And the reason why that's such a thin little weld instead of this nice wide penetrating puddle is because even at that speed and that amount of welding, you can see I, it's very hard to see that. There's a little tit sitting out there. You can see that it looks pretty ugly on the backside. You know, this is uh, definitely got more than 100% penetration, but I never felt like I was just gonna punch through the material. Whereas this is just, just about punched through the whole way. It'll be interesting to see what the big boy does on this, but um, yeah, so not too impressed with this on this particular material. So granted you could use an 030 wire and this has other settings that says it'll weld this thickness, but I prefer to stock the minimum amount of welding supplies I can get away with because they just stack up. And these are all of my test welds with that machine. So yeah, junk. All right, on to the mid-grade. Okay, let's get close up on that. So some of this could be my hands too. This is the ESOB and this is the Hobart handler. And I would say that, I don't know, it seems reasonably close. That definitely seems smoother, but I kind of did a little bit of this or that, and I kind of just dragged this one. So, but one thing I could, I feel like the edges on this are higher, which means that this was a little bit colder and the material is just stacking up a little bit. Um, on the back side, you got a very similar heat affected zones. They're probably pretty similarly set up. Um, not, you know, this is fine. The problem with it is that I kind of bought this machine for really thin sheet metal and it doesn't seem to be capable of it, but it's capable of the stuff that every MIG welder is capable of, which means it's not that capable. All right, this is the Hobart Handler 140 full pull. I will say I don't have the wire feed up all the way because that doesn't work with this. I suspect it's, uh, yeah, they, they expect you to weld aluminum with this machine, which is just not, not gonna happen with this kind of gun. So in any case, we'll, uh, we'll give it a shot five and we're at like, I don't know, 50%, maybe I'll go a little lower. Yeah, five and 50 on the feed speed. All right, contact. clean the back side of this off before I uh <laughs> I weld it on it but here oh that's hot here we go so this is again with the ESOB and this is with the uh the Hobart handle 140 I will say the ESOB started instantly every time this almost like da 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 and then it gets feeding I think that's due to a, a weak feed system the feed system on that is not that great uh, the weld itself is perfectly adequate, I would say. It, you know, again, the material seems stacked a little more. Uh, and ooh, touch the hot spot again. On the back side, I would say the heat affected zone is less than the ESA, but that's 200 amps. This is 140, so you'd expect that. But this this thickness of material, I would say, judging by the heat zone, and all that, it's really too thick for this. And and even on the side of the machine itself, it says quarter inch. You're going to need multiple passes. That's the Hobart handler, full pull. All right, guys, it's time for the big dog. The Miller CP300 with the S22A wire feeder. Um, I have it set on right about 150 inches per minute and the volts is set right about 18 volts. I played around with it for a little bit. I burned a lot of holes through it with this as well. So I would say a point in the ESAB's favor is that you could just set it to the settings and it works. I think there's some more points in the ESAB's favor for this really small stuff as well. But we're gonna set up and show you what the weld looks like here. All right, this is a Miller 300 amp welder, uh, 20 gauge sheet metal, uh, big welding test. Contact, but not really. Okay. Uh, 
it's a very, it ends up with a very different looking weld, if I am to, uh, to tell the truth. It definitely puts a lot of heat into it uh, and puckers the metal, metal down quite a bit. But if you look in on it, so you got the ESOB, which really just did a pretty fantastic job. Might've been a little bit hot, but, and then you've got the, the Hobart, which was just trying to not burn through. And then you've got the Miller. And, and honestly, I'd say that's a pretty decent weld. It is stacked up a little high. I don't know how to fix that, but it's, a, it's certainly a problem I'm having. And let's take a look at the bottom of it. And you can see that the amount of penetration is just a little bit less than with the other two welders, which I, again, the difference between this and this is probably uh, user error, but the difference between this and these two is quality of the machine, I think, and design and other stuff. It was spinning a little bit, so I probably don't have the parameter set perfectly. I don't usually use this machine for material this thin, but it clearly it can even go lower than this. So clearly it's a matter of figuring out how to configure the machine properly, but we'll go on to the mid-level test now. This is the Miller CP300 300 amp MIG welder medium test. Take one. All right, guys. Contact. It welded. It did good. I actually don't know what any of the footage looks like yet through the through the welding cam, um, but we'll take a close look at it here. Um, it's a little tall. I'd probably play with the settings a little more. That one needs more fiddling with the settings than the other two machines, I would say, but that's kind of fine. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the bottom, see. And yeah, all three, you know, he, ooh, wow, that's the rest of that's hot too. All three of those zones look pretty good. Um, yeah, does a great job on it. Now it's time for the big piece. So this is the Miller CP300 full pull test. I have cranked the machine up to 44 volts and 700 inches per minute. This is not gonna be a beautiful weld, but just merely to demonstrate the potential power. And that's kind of what I was hoping would happen. If you see, just like with the thin metal, literally burnt a hole right through it. Um, yeah, that's penetration. So you can see why though, a 200 amp welder, if you're welding anything, you know, core 3 16 or whatever it is, this no, is more than quarter anyways, 5 16 or 3 8 or whatever, you're just not getting that much penetration with the 200 amp machine. It's not a bad, it's a beautiful weld actually. Um, that machine does MIG nicely, I will say that. But if you need the beans, this big boy has the beans. Now granted these weren't appropriate feeds or whatever to use, but this was the full pull. So it all gets turned up 100% except for the Hobart because if you turn that up to 100%, it's, this is no good. So in any case, that's uh, the last of the MIG test. All right, guys, that about does it for the MIG test, which is this week. Next week, stay tuned for the TIG test, which I think is going to be a little more interesting, certainly anyways. It's kind of, it's, again, it's not meant to say which welder is the best, though I would say that that ESOB definitely has some, uh, some magic going on in it as far as MIG welding. It seems to start instantly, almost like it's got high frequency start in a MIG or some wizardry like that. Whereas my other machines tend to sputter a little bit before they start. I, I don't know why, I'm not an expert in that. Would I trade in though, my two big blues for a, well, or would I trade in this big blue for that MIG? Maybe, maybe. Uh, granted, not at the price difference, but 
Uh, that was a very smooth, good running machine. I really thought I was gonna say it's a piece of trash and I hate it because I hate my little Hobart handler because it's just not. <sighs> if you start off welding with industrial machines, the little home jobby units just feel crappy after a while. So that's basically it though. If you need, you know, if that's what you got the means for, the Hobart handler beats the hell out of nothing. And it's still a good welder and you can still do good welds with it. You want to upgrade to a big monster machine like the Miller? It's a fantastic machine. You can make anything you want with it. Nothing will be too big. And as we saw, you can go, you can turn it down too. I think a little more finesse time with that and I'd be able to dial these in really well. And then if you've got money to burn and you're never going to take anything big or aluminum, it's hard to argue against the an ESOB or a similar unit. I'm sure the Miller and the whatever Lincoln Electric are all, they're all the same. Everlast apparently makes a pretty good one. So anyways, that's my thoughts on, uh, on different sizes of MIG welders and different sort of categories of MIG welders. So thanks for watching. It's not theoretically practical anymore. It's wires, tires, and fires because that's easier to spell. And we'll see you next week.